There are days when you think, oh, it's all over. Yeah, we can't do this anymore. Are those like last moments where we think, oh, it's all over? Like, <laughs> that's it. God shows up at the nick of time for us and it's happened over the years. My name is Tracy Bata and this is my young CEO story. I was on one of my many weight loss journeys at the time. I wanted to lose some weight, so I read about smoothie detox online. I went to buy my fruit and um, got a blender, and I was making my own smoothies for a couple of days. Um, I think by the third day, I was over it. I didn't want to wake up early to make my smoothies, and then I didn't like my smoothies watered down, because by the time I got to work to have them, they were already watered down. And um, thirdly, it just, uh, my fruit size spoiling, so it just seemed so inconvenient altogether. And I thought that, okay, I, I think I'll be ready to pay premium to have someone deliver this to me. And um, I was like, wait a minute, I think I can do that. I want something more for myself. I called on my friend then and she was in sync. And um, that was it. We had been saving for a girl's trip then to Miami. And um, I was like, you know what? Let's do this now. Let's do this. The mom, Mia Kande, she's co founder and COO of the business as well. So we decided to jump right on it, thinking that in a couple of months, we'll be getting some sort of salary or extra funds to do what we needed to do. So yeah, it was just $5,000 of both of our savings then that we injected into the business. And it was pretty small then, we couldn't rent any space at the time. So what we did was to speak to a friend that had a kitchen in 1004 VI, and we asked him, okay, let's use your kitchen for a while, gather some momentum, and then go out to rent our own space. And he agreed. So what we didn't discuss was how long, you know, he was going to allow that happen. So when we did our soft run sometime in October um, 2014, we ran for about three weeks and I was like, you know what, I think I want my space back. I don't want you guys to be here. And we're devastated because we had injected $5,000 into the business and then we had no other cash and then we just started. So we had to close shop. It was such a painful day because we didn't even have where to keep our, our stuff, you know, because we had bought some things that we didn't want to go bad. We didn't have where to keep anything. At that point, that was where Persistence came in. We kept on speaking to people. We went around the doors of VI knocking. We knocked at buildings, yeah? We, we do that from time to time when we're looking for choice locations, yeah? So we go, we, I'm a, a business partner, mommy. We drive around, knock down. Oh, we're looking for a small place, just a tiny place um, to start our business. We can offer to pay you this, that, that, that. I think we found a couple of interesting spaces. And then luckily for us, one of the guest houses we found, um, a friend of mine back then at um, where I, I previously worked knew the owner. So we had a conversation with the person and he was a bit greedy then. I think we didn't see it coming because we didn't know much about running the business then. He wanted to take half the rent, um, half the revenue we made for rent payment. We were desperate, they're like, okay, let's do this. It was a bad idea because there were months where we paid up to maybe almost $2,000 in rent from our revenue. Funny thing, he employed an accountant to work with us. So he was paying someone's salary to sit with us to count whatever we're selling and whatever we're, we're you know, spending money on. So we did the same thing we did before. We drove around VI knocking on people's doors and we found someone that was willing to take us on and pay a monthly rent of about 200,000 flats. So he didn't really care about what we sold. We're just, we're just meant to pay that. We had to like sneakishly move some things out and then we went back to him and said, we're ready to go. He didn't want us to leave, believe you. Believe it, I, I, he didn't want us to leave because obviously the rest get how I think they had low points at the time in guess how. So this revenue from this small business was even helping them run the, business, the property. He didn't want us to leave. Um, we had to talk to him that you can't hold us here. Like things are not going well. You no, know, they didn't even let our customers come into the compound then. So it was really a funny situation. We had a customer saying that I think these people are dealing or something. Why can't we always go into to see what they are doing? Yeah, but we moved out. He was surprised, but we did. And it's just been upwards from there. I think leaving his shackles really did us a lot of favor because we're selling so much and we couldn't like make use of our money as much. Yeah, but immediately we lived there. Oh boy, we did we save a lot of money to move further. We 
we had a lot of problems getting someone, an angel investor, to invest in us. I, I had, I spoke to an uncle, I spoke to my dad, my dad, spoke to my dad, I spoke to a couple of people, mommy and myself spoke to a couple of people, family, friends, just to get that initial lift up the ground and we never seemed to convince anyone to invest, not because we didn't already have traction, because this was the business that was doing so well. The first month started, we had sold over $1,000 in revenue, months after we kept on, the growth was like exponential. So we, it was so difficult, you know, understanding why people didn't want to just invest in a business that was growing this much and there was potential. So I, 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 I know that some of the feedbacks we got then was that where women we weren't going to like probably probably get tired of the business at some point. Maybe when the other hassles of raising a family comes on and just, people believed we jump ship. That, that that was just it. So it was not until 2017 we got our first angel investment and it was even less than the initial money we had put in in the start of the business but we just needed cash at the time so we took it funny enough it was a customer that did that investment yes our first ever angel investment was a customer we couldn't believe our eyes like why is the customer seeing this vision and other people closer people to us aren't like seeing this vision with us i think it probably did about three four thousand dollars then but it was handy at the time like i mentioned and then we got one other angel investment um of about maybe roughly ten thousand dollars and that was it we started with one employee and um, she's still with us to date um, she started, you know, making the smoothies then and we would pick calls and get the orders from people and she would produce the smoothies for us. But after about two or three months, we tried to get more people on board and yeah, it was mostly DIY anyway. I did a lot of job, I did customer service. Um, I did um, I did blending when it gets so like busy, I had to go in and do the blending and yeah. There are days when you think, oh, it's all over. Yeah, we can't do this anymore. We just have to find another way. But I don't know why it never gets to the point where I'm like actually going to find an alternative to do. So I just say, ah, bad. Like, I, there's something we say at the business that God shows up at the nick of time for us. And it's happened over the years. So at those like last moments where we think, oh, it's all over, like <laughs> that's it. Something happens really fantastic and um, like someone probably calls to order for 500 cups of smoothies or something just comes in that injects cash into the business or that if the problem wasn't really cash but something comes to solve the problem for us and and that's it. We have sacrificed a whole lot to make sure the business moves to the next stage. At the prime of uh, what I say, what would have been the prime of my career, I was building a business so I, I couldn't like afford like simple things that people that I graduated from school with or started working with at the time could afford. I did sacrifice a lot terms of, in terms of financial sacrifices. I did that. I sacrificed a whole lot of my time. I didn't have holidays. I didn't, I didn't go on any breaks. So I was at work most of the time. And I think this is ongoing and it's continuous. We sacrifice sleep a lot. Anybody can call you at 10 p.m. and you have to get on working on something that um, yeah, that you need to do that. So it's just a lot of sacrifices, and I, I would say it's it's um it's not something I regret because I can see that my sacrifices are bringing up you know more things, more great things for the brand. I think the kind of relationship I build with my friends over time, they know I'm a go-getter. When I want to do something, I just do it, and people try not to convince me otherwise. So I really didn't have friends trying to convince me otherwise. But my dad, on the other hand. He called me up so many times to change track. Like, I spent so much on your fees. You can be doing much greater working as a professional. Why are you doing this? Especially because I had to call him a couple of times to assist me. So he was like, mm -mm, this is not doing you um, justice. This is not doing you. You need to move elsewhere. So I, I got a lot of, sometimes he just sends me into, um, job applications to apply for. And I'm laughing like, Dad, you know I'm employing some people and you're telling me to apply for jobs. Like, okay, don't worry, I'll do that. But now he's super proud of me. I take him to my stores um, randomly when he's in town and he's really impressed that I, you know, I kept going. I didn't um, go back on my track. First of all, I tell all women with kids and careers to take it one day at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, just 
plan your time properly. I do a lot of um, schedules, my phone, my calendars. I don't joke with my time. I think you have to delegate sometimes. You can't do, you can't be a do it all when you're trying to build your career and raising a family as well. So I delegate a lot. I have help from my husband, from a nanny, from school. My daughter attends school now and um, from my team as well. So I have other people in Smoothie Express that can step up to do whatever work I'll be missing from in say a month or like a week. So it's not just me alone, it's, it takes a whole village really and somehow we just like have to take it one day at a time, manage our time properly and then get people to help us when we can be present. So we initially opened in 2014 and shut down for about three weeks after a soft run and open, we opened in 2015 March. Since that day till now, we've never had any day of no sale. Even though we don't reach out to our customers or even if we don't do anything, someone will call in to make an order or come into our store. Sometimes we just think, oh, the country is getting a lot harder than it should be. Our price, our price points are not so, you know, to the barest minimum. So we still keep thinking of how our customers, you know, find that money to come in and patronize us. And we also know that it's probably something we're doing good. So when the chips are down, why do they still come in to, you know, get stuff? I always show up for the job. No matter how difficult it is, I think everybody on my team knows that. Okay, show up. Like it can't, it can't be that. You know, whatever. No matter what um, would go down, just show up and be there. Consistency. We've um, we've had to be consistent. I've had to make my team know that. Okay, whatever it is that happens, we have to just be consistent. We have to keep moving. Some days I'm the one that isn't consistent, and I have one other person telling me, oh. You have to be consistent, Tracy. You're you're lagging behind and all that. One thing I had to like, you know, learn over the years is to always go at it. Like, so things you might be trying one way to do things and it doesn't always fall through. Like, go another way. Keep doing it. Find keep finding ways to do it. So apart from being consistent, you have to persist. Like, push further, get to get results. The goal is to open more stores around. Lagos, eventually other states in Nigeria, and eventually other parts of Africa. So I have um, another passion of mine. I would like to, I would say that was my retirement plan from Smoothie Express. I hope to step down someday as a CEO and retire to a small pasta restaurant owned by myself. Yeah, really small. I'm just passionate about pasta, so I want, I hope to do that in the future, many years from now anyway. I think I put so much pressure on myself then and um, probably helped the business grow, but I think I was pressured to, su to succeed in what I was doing. So I'll tell myself that keep being what you wear, like be excellent at what you do. Just don't add that pressure to your life. Like I, I was, at a point in my life, I think I was slowly going to depression because I was, I was obviously, I, I wanted everything to happen at when, yeah, but I think life just takes its course. Like you can do all you want, but you have to just watch things go organically as they should.